Today, we're going to install Linux on the Evolve laptop. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Now I'll leave a notation here on the screen if you want to just jump straight to the instructions for loading this. However, I do want to discuss a couple of things before we get to installing uh, Linux on this laptop. First of all, there is no driver for the onboard audio chipset depending on which version of this laptop you have. In the very first version that they released of this laptop, the audio drivers do work. There's at least two versions that came after that, and in those, uh, in both of those cases, the audio chipset uh, driver does not work. It doesn't exist for Linux. So you will lose onboard audio uh, probably unless you have version one. However, that doesn't really impact us for ham radio because we all use external sound cards to do digital. Either the sound card built into uh, various radios or external sound cards like the Sombrant sound card. Now, the one other thing I want to discuss here is which flavor of Linux you choose to load. I'm going to be loading Linux Mint. If you prefer Ubuntu, then by all means, go ahead and install that as well. Uh, what I'm going to be doing through this series of videos should all work on any Debian-based uh, flavor of Linux. So, if you prefer another uh, version, then go ahead and load that up. Now, let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and see what we need to do to get this installed and running on the laptop. So the first thing I'm going to do is head over to linuxmint.com. Again, if you prefer Ubuntu or something else, go ahead and head over to their, uh, their website instead. Once you're at the Linux Mint website, go ahead and click on download right here. That's going to bring you to the download page, and there's three different versions of this that we can install. There's the Cinnamon Edition, there's the Mate Edition, and then this very last one is XFCE, uh, which is a super light, uh, a simple and efficient version uh, of the desktop. I chose to go with Cinnamon on my install, and I've had absolutely no issues with it. I just uh, happen to personally like the Cinnamon edition. But again, this is personal preference, so if you prefer one of the others, then by all means, go ahead and download that instead. So I'm going to go ahead and click download right here. That's going to bring me to the next page. And now you just need to pick the mirror that you want to download from. So I'm going to choose one in the U.S. And let's just go with Clarkston University. So I'll go ahead and click this and give it just a few minutes to download. Once that download finishes up, you are going to need an application that can burn that image to a USB drive. I'm choosing to use Bellina Etcher here today, and I'll leave a link to Bellina down in the description below. Once we get here, let's go ahead and click Flash from File, and we'll load up that file that we just downloaded. So I'll go ahead and choose Linux Mint 21 right here and click Open. The next thing we need to do is click the target device. This is the USB drive that we're going to be uh, burning this image to. So let's select the target and I'll go ahead and choose this generic storage device that's 31 gigs. Be careful right here and be certain that you're choosing the right target device. Otherwise, you could end up erasing something that you don't want to erase. Once you've got the check mark right there, go ahead and click Select One. And the next thing we need to do is flash the drive. So we'll go ahead and click Flash. On a Mac, it does ask you for your password before this will go ahead and complete. So I'll give it my password and say OK. And that's it. We'll give it just a few minutes and wait for it to finish flashing the drive. Once it's done, you should get this flash complete right here. We're now ready to go ahead and eject this USB drive from this computer and move over to the laptop. Now, with the laptop completely powered down, go ahead and insert your USB drive and press the power key on the laptop. As soon as you see lights turn on on the laptop, go ahead and start pressing the delete key. 
until you get to this screen here. Once we get to this screen here, let's go ahead and move over to the save and exit. And this is where we're going to choose the USB drive that we've got loaded in. So we'll go ahead and start coming down. It looks like mine is called Generic Storage Device 1532. Once we've got that highlighted, let's go ahead and press Enter. So once everything boots up, you should be looking at the Linux Mint desktop. And you'll notice that we have this Install Linux Mint icon right here. Let me pause right here for just a second to say, booting into a live environment like you're looking at right here is a great option if you want to try different flavors of Linux. Being able to boot off of that USB drive and never impacting anything on our hard drive is a pretty cool way to be able to test drive different flavors. Now, let's go ahead and get this one installed. So I'm going to click Install Linux Mint right here, and that will bring us into the install wizard. We're going to go ahead and click through this just like we would with any other operating system that we were trying to install. So choosing my language first, I'll go ahead and click Continue. The same applies to my keyboard layout. I'm just going to choose English US since that's my location. Next, if it asks you about installing multimedia codecs, let's go ahead and install all of those. So this next screen asks us what type of installation do we want to do. I already have Linux Mint 20.3 installed on this machine, but I actually want to erase this and just install Linux Mint 21. So I'm going to choose this third option right here that says Erase Disk and Install Linux Mint. Go ahead and click Continue. It will ask you, are you certain you want to erase the disk and do this? And we're just going to tell it, yes, continue. And that's it. Enjoy a cup of coffee or a cup of tea while it installs the new OS. Okay, after the install has finished up and you've rebooted, you should be presented with a screen like this that says, Welcome to Linux Mint. Now, we've got just a couple of other things that we need to do to get everything up and running correctly. The primary thing we need to do is get the Wi-Fi drivers installed. Now, for this, you're going to need either an Ethernet adapter, and this is the one here that I purchased, or you're going to maybe need a USB Wi-Fi adapter to plug in and use. And we only need this just for a few minutes to get these Wi-Fi drivers installed. Once you've got the laptop connected to the internet, go ahead and open up the browser. And we're going to navigate to github.com forward slash LW finger forward slash RTL 8723DU. And I'll leave a link to this page down in the description below so you guys can copy and paste. On this page, let's scroll down a little ways until we find this section labeled for Ubuntu. We can copy the first line here and then go ahead and open up the terminal window and paste in that command. Give it your sudo password that you set up during the installation and press return. Give this just a couple of minutes and it'll get the repository directory updated for you. I'm just going to go ahead and clear that screen. We'll jump back over to the web page and we want to grab this second line of instructions right here. So we'll highlight that and copy it. Head back to the terminal and paste in the information that we just copied. Tell it yes when it asks if you want to continue. Now that we've got the dependencies installed, scroll back to the top of the page, click on this code button right here, and we're going to copy this information here. Let's head back to the terminal window and let's give it git space clone space and let's paste in that link that we just copied. Go ahead and press return. Once that finishes up, we need to move into that new directory that we just created. So let's uh, use cd space rtl, and I'm just going to, whoop, got to spell it right, rtl. I'm going to use the tab key to autocomplete, and we'll move into that directory. Next, we're going to run the make command, followed by sudo make install. Go ahead and press return. And finally, we need to run sudo modprobe space hyphen v space 8723du. Press return. 
And at this point, we should be able to unplug that USB adapter or Wi-Fi adapter, whichever one you chose to use. And come right down here to the bottom right, click on the network connections, and you should now see a list of Wi-Fi networks that you can connect with. So go ahead and play with and get familiar with your new Linux Mint install. And next week, we will start looking at installing ham radio applications onto the laptop. We'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.